Hello, my name is Robert Haddad, and today I'll be answering the question, why did Lucifer fall? There are three main views we're going to discuss today. The first I call the classical scripture view, which we find mostly in the Old Testament, particularly the prophets Isaiah and Ezekiel. Then the second view is what I call the Dominican, or the view of St. Thomas Aquinas. And the third view is what I call the Franciscan view of the fall of Lucifer. Before considering any of these three options, let us first answer the question, who is Lucifer? Originally, Lucifer was the highest and greatest of all the angels. The name Lucifer means light bearer. The prophet Isaiah calls him the star of the morning. The Hebrew word for star is Hillel or Hillel, which means the shining one. The prophet Ezekiel also describes Lucifer as follows, quote, You had the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty, the anointed cherub who covers. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked in the midst of the stones of fire. Ezekiel 28 verses 11 and 14. Ezekiel also wrote about the initial spiritual state of Lucifer. Quote, You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until unrighteousness was found in you. Ezekiel 28 15. What was this unrighteousness found in Lucifer? Again, Ezekiel tells us, quote, Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom by reason of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. Ezekiel 28, 17. In other words, Lucifer became enamored with his own beauty and splendor. And his heart was lifted up. That is, he became proud and he inordinately desired greater things for himself. The prophet Isaiah also speaks of Lucifer's fall. Quote, How you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning, son of the dawn. You have been cut down to the earth. You have been weakened, you who have weakened the nations. Isaiah 14, 12. Why did Lucifer fall, according to Isaiah? Quote, You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the recesses of the north. Isaiah 14, 13. From both Ezekiel and Isaiah, we can deduce that Lucifer fell into excessive and disordered self-love. And this disordered self-love drove him to desire to be something greater than he actually was. Something greater than God had created him to be. He also wanted a throne equal to God's. This we can conclude from Lucifer's own words recorded by Isaiah. Quote, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Isaiah 14:14. 14, 14. But instead of being lifted up, Lucifer and his demonic followers are cast down because of their pride. They now dwell in the eternal fire prepared by God for them, as we read in Matthew 25, 41. The second view on the fall of Lucifer is what I call the Dominican or Thomistic view. According to this view, all the angels were originally created good and in God's grace. They were aware of God's existence and their dependency upon him. However, they did not yet enjoy the direct vision of God, that is the beatific vision, and they are aware of the need to merit this. This would involve a free choice for or against God. One charitable act would merit the vision of God, but one rebellious act would result in eternal damnation. 
as angels do not have bodies, any sin of theirs would have to be spiritual, either pride or envy. Pride would be in the form of excessive self-love. Envy, a sadness of another's gifts or qualities that would be an impediment to their own desires. Were the angels willing to acknowledge their dependency upon God and resignation to his will to attain the beatific vision, that is, were they willing to be humble, or to attain the beatific vision through their own efforts and in their own way, that is, pride. St. Thomas Aquinas concludes that the demons chose to love themselves above God. They rejected the need for God's assistance to attain the beatific vision and preferred to rest in their own natural gifts and powers to attain eternal bliss. They also desired such happiness according to their own wills, not God's. This was tantamount to a rejection of God's grace and God's will. This was tantamount to pride. The third view on the fall of Lucifer is the Franciscan view. According to this hypothesis, all the angels were created outside the beatific vision and needed to pass a test to attain it. Lucifer was the highest of the angels and the original Lord of all creation. As the highest of the angels, Lucifer was the conduit of God's communications to the other angels. What was the test for the angels to obtain the beatific vision? God revealed to all of them, through Lucifer, his plan to create human beings and the incarnation of the Word of God. The Word of God would assume a human nature and dwell among humans in the paradise on earth. For our good pleasure, this incarnation was to occur even if there were no original human sin. Afterwards, this incarnated God-man and his mother would be translated from the earth and elevated to heaven then crowned respectively as the king and queen of heaven, above all the angels, including Lucifer himself. Lucifer and all the other angels were required to freely and lovingly submit to this plan. However, envy arose within Lucifer, as such a plan would deprive him of his status as the Lord of all creation, subject now to the word of God united to human nature and to a human queen. Lucifer preferred that the word of God unite to his angelic person and that this composite of the word of God and himself be placed at the right hand of God in heaven. Thereby, Lucifer would retain the status as Lord of all creation, and be, quote, like unto God. Lucifer rebelled against God's plan, declaring, quote, better to reign in hell than serve in heaven, as we read in Milton's Paradise Lost. Angelic war now breaks out with St. Michael the Archangel triumphing over Lucifer, as we read in Revelation 12, 7. The name Michael meaning who is like God. Lucifer, defeated, is cast down into hell, made for him and all his angels, one third in total. Afterwards, upon the creation of Adam and Eve, Lucifer saw the first steps in God's plan for the incarnation. To thwart this, he attacks Adam and Eve, to detach them from God's grace and dominion, and place them under his own dominion. Lucifer succeeds in this attack to the original sin at the foot of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Quote, the temptation, you shall become like God, knowing good and evil, as we read in Genesis 3, 5. Lucifer 
has now acquired dominion over humanity and believes he has permanently thwarted God's plan for the incarnation. How can the incarnation now take place? How can the word of God unite to a wounded human nature that is prone to sin and under the dominion of Lucifer? The solution would be God's and would be the Immaculate Conception. This is the enmity quote that God places between the serpent and the woman that we read in Genesis 3.15. Because of the Immaculate Conception, Mary possesses a perfect human nature, free from the dominion of Lucifer. The Word of God can assume a true human nature from her, and on the cross, offer to God the Father a spotless sacrifice on behalf of fallen humanity. Now the God-man comes into the world, not just for our pleasure, but as Saviour of humanity. To free humanity from the dominion of Lucifer, to break his monopoly hold over humanity, and establish his kingdom of grace and salvation in his stead. Nevertheless, despite the advent of the God-man, Lucifer still seeks dominion over all. We see this in the temptations he directs to Jesus Christ in the wilderness. Quote, I'll give you all this and more if you bow down and worship me. As we read in Matthew 4, 9. Lucifer still, quote, prowls about the world seeking the ruin of souls. 1 Peter 5, 8 tempting humans into sin in order to gain dominion over them and lead them into eternal damnation. It is in hell that Lucifer has dominion over all the apostate angels and lost human souls. This underlines the importance, therefore, of being in a state of grace, to be free from Lucifer's dominion and instead under the dominion of God and eligible for eternal life in heaven. This leaves humans today with another free choice at the foot of another tree, the cross of Jesus Christ. God's will or our own. Choose Christ and persevere in his grace and we will be saved. Or choose sin, which leads ultimately to death and eternal damnation under Lucifer's domination. The choice is ours. Thank you and God bless.